Namaste. Good evening and welcome to a Saturday night live stream. And I just want to uh, start off by showing you in the background, I've got the lights turned down, but in the background, you might see the world's most gorgeous vegan cat. She's just sleeping there, sleeping there on the, on the seat behind me, on her favourite seat. <laughs> so that's Uma, the world's most gorgeous vegan cat. Anyway, I'll just uh, sit here and you won't get to see her. So let's bring up the title. Okay, so I'm doing a live stream tonight because I didn't get to do a live stream. I wasn't on the bicycle this morning, so I didn't get to do a live stream then. And if perchance I'm on the bicycle in the morning, I will be riding with a friend and won't get a chance to um, do a live stream then either. So this is, <laughs> this is making up for the bicycle live stream I usually do on weekend mornings. And uh, in fact, the reason why I, I couldn't get to it this morning was because um, my work is very busy. Um, there's a lot of, with the karma virus, there's a lot of um, fluctuation happening. There's a lot of places closing, either t temporarily or permanently. Uh, and in contrast, there are quite a number of places that are actually um, getting busier. So depending on the industry. And uh, so I was working today and, and that's, yeah, so I didn't get a chance to get on the bicycle. So that is one of those things. So the the topic I wanted to talk about this morning had I had I been doing a bike ride um, and I would have been doing a bike ride socially distancing from people and um, also bearing in mind that the current restrictions allow us to exercise outdoors with one other person. So... So I am doing it within the uh, allowances of the current restrictions if I'm out on the bicycle. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about was a very interesting thing that happened. And it's a statistically shown to happen during uh, wars for, uh, over the last century. And I want to talk about what happens during wars and how that can help us now with the situation that we're, we're in now. So let me just bring up the ticker here at the bottom. Okay, so you'll see the little tickers come up now. And what the ticker uh, asks is, why did suicide rates decrease, or why do, I should say, why do suicide rates decrease during wars? It wasn't very good England, was it? <laughs> Let me see if I can correct that um, with the marvels of modern technology. Here we go. Let's just, uh, what are we going to do? That's a refresh. Let's do a refresh. Why do suicide rates decrease during wars? Okay. So that is an interesting question and a statistic that I came up with, uh, came, came across a couple of years ago. I want to read you a short excerpt directly from the source. Um, research indicates that suicide rates decline during wartime. Now, I found this fascinating because I did some study on it a, a couple of years ago. I would have assumed that during times, initially, I would have assumed that during times of war, suicide rates would have gotten worse. I would have thought there would be so much despair that they that the, the people would just feel in such a terrible uh, state that suicide rates would get worse. But interestingly, they decline. The most likely explanation for this decline is the greater social cohesion of societies during wartime. Um, so that's that, that. That's it in a nutshell. That the most likely explanation for the decline in suicide rates during war is a greater social cohesion of societies. Or put another way, suicide rates decline during wars, and this and this uh, decline is attributed to the increase in social integration brought about by war. Um, during times of war, uh, the existence of a clear external enemy and the bonding together in the face of this threat increase the social ties and networking in, this, in society, thereby increasing social integration. Now, as I'm reading this out to you, I want you to uh, think about that in today's context right now with what we're facing worldwide with this pandemic. So let me just re repeat that again. The existence of a clear external enemy. Now, in, in current times, of course, the enemy is the virus, COVID-19. And the bonding together in the face of this threat increase the social ties and networking in society, thereby increasing social integration. So that's an interesting 
uh, thing that occurs with human behavior in times of crisis that we actually pull together. Um, so let me just see, there was uh, one other thing here about the same study. Um, let's see if I can just grab something from that. I think it's basically saying the same thing. It's a bit of a longer article. Bear with me a moment. Um, okay, still going. <laughs> okay, no. So I've okay. So I've covered. I've covered the main, the main point there. Okay, which is quite quite simply, the most likely explanation for suicide rates declining during wartime is the greater social cohesion of societies. And this uh, is because there is an existence of a clear enemy and people are pulled together in a common cause to, um, to work towards this enemy. So this is what we have right now. And this is why I want to bring up uh, this, this example of, of what statistics have shown over a period of 100 years in relation to suicide rates at wartime. So we have an enemy now. We have a, a silent, deadly... Um, unseen enemy that has very um, uh, obviously created a situation with different levels of fear and panic and stress and all of this very justified as a individual response to an unseen enemy. Uh, it's actually harder to respond to an unseen enemy than it is uh, to respond to one that is basically in front of you. It's like jumping at, at, at shadows, I guess. It's like sort of looking over your shoulder. When the enemy is clearly defined and right there in front of you, you have the opportunity to um, more easily sort of formulate a, um, a strategy to, uh, to come back and, and, you know, how do I combat this enemy? But when you're not sure where the enemy is, um, and and it's and it's the information regarding the enemy is confusing. Then then we're left in a situation where we're it, it's it's a very tricky it's a very tricky situation, which is what we have now. So um, this uh, so what we've learnt from people going through situations of war is that it actually brings people together. There is a cohesion. And there is a an understanding that we have to, if we're going to survive, we have to work together, basically. So it can bring out some very strong elements of human behaviour, uh, a very good cohesion working together. Um, one of the things, so I want you to dwell on that when it comes to... Um, situation we have now is that um, if anything we can actually grow from this so one of the things that we have now that we did not have in uh, previous times where where there were war times and one of the things we've got right now is quite heavy rain you may even hear it in the background because it's started to come down quite heavy so um, one of the things that we didn't have previously was a technology to do exactly what I'm doing now and exactly what so many other people are doing, to be able to reach out instantly to basically any part of the world that has internet connectivity um, or mobile phone connectivity and the technology to receive. So we have an ability to connect in a way that we did not previously have uh, in previous war situations and this is something this is a tool that we can use and I'm seeing people using it now in any case people are talking about um, you know communicating with their friends on zoom where you can have a number of people video chatting at the same time which is fantastic uh, you can do the same thing actually on uh, Facebook Messenger uh, you can do multiple um, or at least I believe you can I've read that you can unless I've changed that recently so um, we have a technology we have a tool that allows us to, if we're self-isolating, if, if we're you know, stuck at home, we can use our creativity to work with these tools we have. Most of us have, at the very least, a mobile phone 
with a camera in it that allows us to do a live stream or to video chat with friends and family. Um, a, you know, a great majority of us would have Wi-Fi so that we could do that, um, you know, hopefully cost effectively. Um, so there's, there's, you know, there's resources there that we can use in a positive way rather than just uh, feeling completely isolated because we have to be very aware of the um, mental health implications of being in a environment that is not changing, where we're, we're inside, we're indoors, we're not actually outdoors in nature, we're not actually taking in the wonderful clarity of air that is outdoors and also the incredible uh, effect that seeing a night sky or or even a daytime uh, beautiful, say, autumn sky, the amazing effect that this has on our psyche and to lift our spirits. If we are not seeing this, then we should be at least taking the opportunity to be looking at our windows, to be getting out in our garden if, the, if, if that's uh, appropriate in the part of the world that you're in and taking in, uh, you know, the vitamin D, taking in the, the fresh air, taking in the sounds of the birds, uh, maybe the, the, the crickets at night, um, just getting all this connection that we need with nature, maybe uh, getting the feel of the earth on our feet um, and just, you know, reconnecting, allowing the external nature to reconnect us internally, which is what it does do, allowing us to slow down and uh, ground ourselves. Because if we're stuck inside, it's not healthy to be indoors all the time. And I am concerned for people that are that are doing that because it is definitely not healthy. So if you don't have the opportunity, if you're living in an environment where you don't have the opportunity to get out of an apartment block or something and be outside, you only have some small veranda or no veranda at all, let's be creative. Let's use technology in a way where we can uh, get on YouTube, um, look at you know fantastic nature videos with beautiful uh, sounds of nature and babbling brooks and so forth. Let's bring that. Let's bring nature to us if we can't go out into nature a little bit because the healing effects of nature can at least be brought to us. So that's something that you know I think we need to think about doing as well. Um, I want to touch on the topic of not, I, I just don't personally think it's a, uh, let me start this again. When the, you know, when the karma virus started becoming news, I deliberately held off sharing a lot of uh, information about it. I held off because I wanted to see what was, what direction it was taking, what the valid, validity of the press reports were. And you know, I needed to be a f reasonably responsible in any with anything I shared. I, I, you know, I, I, if I, I wasn't certain about things I was reading and I, I thought, no, I can't pass this on and feel I'm going to be responsible uh, in passing this on. So I waited till there was a bit more cohesion in the messages being received. Uh, and with that in mind, I want to say that still, there is a lot of information out there that contradicts other information out there. There is a lot of speculation out there. And this is something that I've spoken about in live streams before. Mental speculation uh, that without uh, spiritual wisdom is just a complete waste of time. It's what I call a cosmic mind wank. And it really is somebody just going off in some direction thinking, you know, uh, they've, they know what, you know, they know what the reason for things is and all the rest. And then the next day, see, the reason I talk about this is I, I'm getting sent a lot of, I'm getting a, a lot of messages from people from all over the world. I'm getting sent a lot of information. I'm getting sent videos. I'm getting sent, um, uh, long documents. Uh, I, yes, there's quite a lot of stuff I'm receiving every day. A little bit overwhelming at times because it, it takes me a while to get through it all. And some of it is just pure insanity. It's just pure gibberish. Um, I'm not judging the people that are sending it in good faith. They think they're doing the right thing. But, you know, if I want to take an example of, of something that was sent to me maybe a couple of weeks ago where um, I started watching this YouTube video 
And well, straight away I got offside with within the first thirty seconds or minute of this presenter, who was advocating that we should all be on a raw meat diet. Straight away I went, "Wow, you're that far off the track. That's amazing." And then within the next minute, he said, "The only way you can catch the virus is through injection." And I went, "Okay, that's enough of that video. Goodbye." <laughs> so that's what I mean. That sort of you know, insanity that is out there, and there is tons of it. What if if we take that in, we end up. What do we end up with? Just completely confused. So the antidote to that is that we need to disconnect from that and go back to a meditative state and get the answers from within. We need to uh, make a connection with nature again, either externally outside or bring it to us through technology. We need to meditate and bring the answers back to us to, br to bring back a sense of clarity and to get away from all the confusing messages that are not going to serve us well at all in, a, in, able, in order to be able to make sensible decisions. So keep that in mind um, because, you know, does it, do we really know where, where the karma virus started, um, how it was created, how it's, how it's been spread? There, there is um, when it happened. I mean, there is a lot of information about it. And um, once a lot of the information starts pointing in a general direction that's the same, then, uh, you know, it's more likely to be correct. But a lot of people, a, a large majority of people can also be wrong. I mean, look at the world. The majority of people still eat animal products. So the majority of people are actually making a wrong decision at every meal. You think, how is that possible? How can so many people, how can the greatest majority of people in the world be wrong? But And yet they are. And so keep that in mind when you watch a video or you read some information from some expert who's not vegan. Because the way they look at the world, the way they look at information, will not even take into account the, the fact that the virus came from an animal source, they will be looking outside of that. It won't be in their in, on their radar. It won't be in their their view. It's just not something that they're thinking of because they don't think about animal rights. They don't think about protecting animals and doing the right thing about it. There, that's not that. It, it just hasn't entered into their life because they're still eating animals. So how can it? So they're looking for other reasons for the karma virus because they're not going to look at it coming from an animal. They're going to look at, oh, you know, it's a, the government created it. You know, so this is where you start to get these conspiracies and they get more and more insane. And you just get, um, you know, yeah, well, I, it's no need to really go right into it. But there is a lot of absolute rubbish out there. And just take it back to the messenger and have a look at the messenger in, in these cases. If the messenger is vegan, then I'm going to give them a lot of credibility because their research is going to take into account um, the protection of animals. If they're not, then their research is less likely to take into account the protection of animals, the rights of animals, and they're more likely to look outside that arena into something else, and it's just going to be ridiculous. And unfortunately, there's a lot of that out here. So the points I wanted to make tonight, I think I made most of the points, is that, um, uh, and nam namaste, uh, Suraj, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, the, um, is that w what has been proven uh, during war times is that humans, when they pull together, when people pull together to fight a common enemy, we actually find resilience. We find something to live for, a sense of hope, something to fight for, um, we have a sense of community. We have a feel a stronger spirit, and uh, we 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 develop or we work on our creativity. And you know, we there's just if you look at the you know any of the stories from the war war years of the of the of the creativity of people to be able to source things that they could not get otherwise. We have become in modern times very lazy, very selfish and not particularly creative. And so we need to be able to put on our creative thinking hat. How do we, you know, so I'll give you an example. A friend of mine's mother has been making masks. I ordered uh, four masks uh, off him today, which I'll get on Monday. Um, they're not cheap, but 
uh, I saw them and I thought, wow, these look pretty impressive. So there was creativity, you know. This sort of thing, during the war years, if you talk to people that went through the war years, they will tell you about the amazing creativity of, of how they just had to build things from materials that they had because there was no other choice. They could not get the materials they needed. So they had to be incredibly resourceful. And my father was a child uh, during World War II and I've listened to um, stories of, of what he went through, both stories of, of, um, of how scary it was uh, when he was in Ireland uh, and, the, and the war was still on, how scary it was as a child to witness what was happening. And also the stories of resourcefulness of, of just how they, um, uh, hi Susan, thank you for watching. The stories of resourcefulness of how the families would just come up with ways of doing things. And I think we've, you know, we've had it so good for so long, relatively speaking, that we've lost a lot of this, you know, that we that we have within us, a lot, a lot of this ability to just come up with things. I'll give you an example before I wind up for tonight. An example was um, uh, I shared a video today of how to make your own hand sanitizer, and it was two ingredients. And I thought, damn, that's so simple. It was rubbing alcohol and aloe vera. And it's like, how simple can you get? You know, <laughs> it's like... And you can, if you had those ingredients, if you had an aloe vera plant, for instance, I have them growing out the back. If you had rubbing alcohol for cleaning or, or whatever they use it for, then you've got the ingredients in your home. You could, you know, you could make um, sanitizer, which at the moment is hard to get. Having said that, I actually was able to order online bottles of sanitizer today. So, you know, that was the first day I've been able to achieve that. So that's that. That was good. So, but the point being, you know. We need to think outside this getting on the computer and trying to just buy something online if it's not available you know we need to think how can we be creative like getting masks if they're really hard to get we can make our own masks that sort of thing so that's the point i wanted to make what we learned from the war years is that people have a sense of fighting for something and pulling together and this is what perhaps we can take from what's happening now with this pandemic around the world and hopefully that will that will bring a sense of togetherness rather than a sense of separateness i also want to say on a very very on a personal note that i do appreciate every message that you that you send me um even though i may not agree with the information sent um, but I do appreciate you've taken the time and you feel it's important to share it. I appreciate that. And on, on a personal level, I, I if, if you are feeling um, isolated, uh, you're feeling, you know, a bit stir crazy because you're, you're, you know, walled up in your house sort of thing, not only do I completely understand, but please feel free, feel free to reach out and send me a message and uh, we can have a chat. So thank you, everyone. Uh, I, I uh, sincerely uh, put best wishes forward for everyone in this uh, these difficult times, for the businesses that have had to close or temporarily or permanently, for the people that are struggling uh, with losing jobs, um, for people that are having health issues because of the virus, um, all I can do is say, I just, you know, send you best wishes. And um, in the meantime, remember, now more than ever, it is important to live vegan and save lives so that we don't have this situation happen again. We have a chance now to move away from it. This has been a warning shot. Let's take it as seriously as it needs to be. Thank you. Have a good night. Ahimsa.